Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I want to teach you how to super easily make a circuit board by uh, printing with it a uh, normal inkjet printer. You will need uh, your circuit template on a piece of paper, like so. Oh, yep, there we go. And it should be printed in right scale. This is what people usually don't tell you before you have tried a couple times and wonder what's wrong. So you have to see your printing settings and actually check these with um, some uh, pins you know, like your Arduino pins or something, or measure it with calibers. But anyways, the printing is the first one. This is plain old normal printing paper. Um, I have cranked the ink amount about to maximum that I, my printer can do. And that's pretty much it. I guess uh, highest quality you can. Also, if your printer has a setting for a drying time, you can put the drying time uh, more. So it will uh, print slower and give some time between the uh, lines so it will dry better then you will need a piece of the copper board of course this one is uh, pre lacquered so this will be photosensitive um, copper you can also use the normal one and just uh, use the photosensitive lacquer for it but yeah this is pre lacquered and I suggest that you just buy this one. It's the easiest way to make circuit boards. Then I have two pieces of glass where you can clamp the, the circuit board while it's uh, under development. It, this is not necessary, but I see it helps with the consistency of the results. Then you need the developing agent. Uh, this is uh, sodium metasilicate. This is uh, not super dangerous, but this still should not <laughs> be drinking or anything. Then you need the actual acid for the for making the actual PCB. This is sodium persulfite. Uh, these usually have the amounts in them, like this one says 500 grams for 2.5 uh, liters of water. But um, I, of course, don't do that much at the time if I do boards like this. So I have a couple deciliters in here already mixed. Same goes with this. I have like, I don't know, two, three deciliters. I have a couple of these clamps. These come with 3D printers at least. I don't know what these are called or where they are usually used, but I clamp the glass with these. Then you need some source of light. The photosensitive developing lacquer seems to be working with like normal energy saving, saving lights and infrared, oh no, UV, Sorry, I said wrong. UV light you need, but any any light that gives a little bit UV, it just depends how long you need to keep it in there. But now we have all the things going through you need. So I will start with uh, cutting this template just roughly around it. For my case, it doesn't matter since I have a scrap piece and I'm not even using this. But if you're doing an actual PCB that you're going to use, I would suggest making all the cuts nice and center it on your piece and whatnot. Well, yeah, this will fit nicely on top of that. Now we have this. Ah, one more thing. We need some kind of foil. I will just use the basic, um, this is olive oil, 
doesn't matter you can use uh any kind of even i guess motor oil will be <laughs> used for this for this part you should not have too much light in the room since when you peel this layer off this it starts to develop the board but this is just a example now so i'm not too worried about it going wrong i will put it wrong way around for now and this one we put on the shiny side and uh, printed down so the ink is facing the board after that we put a tiny bit of oil on it as you can see it starts to become clear and this is basically how we are going to get the light through the through the paper so it will develop the circuit I tried to get all the bubbles under the under the paper and overall see that it's nicely there then I put this between two pieces of glass like so and use a couple of these to hold it tight there we go I'm gonna use a piece of paper to take the excess oil off since I made a mess here <laughs> kind of hard to do this with the camera between my face and what I'm working on there we go and just make sure it's flat and nice and the class is really not necessary I guess but then you have to really make sure it's flat this way it clamps it pretty nicely so it kind of forces the bubbles out itself because if there's any bubbles it will um, leave some spots that are not developed right and stuff so it will get ruined so this is the easiest way so you can be sure it will stay also if you want you can now turn this in between your uh, developing process and not to worry that it will shift that is also a good thing because at least my method using uh, I guess it's nail polish oven you can do gel uh, nail polish and it is a UV light and I'm using that so it creates some hot spots for some reason so this helps really when I'm turning it a couple times between the curing process so this is the oven I was talking about it has a uh, has a few of those basic energy saving lights in there I guess these are some special ones for UV since the light color is kinda different but anyways for board like this and this has a lot of light so I will probably probably keep it here um, about six six eight minutes and I will turn it on so you can see uh, turn it on so you can see it's a little bluish nice coloring there I will devil this this devil this completely and then I will get back when it's ready so now the devil ping is ready it took me I guess uh, seven minutes was the total time I used Oops, be careful not to break this I will rinse the oil off this so it doesn't go in my solution just use some uh, dishwashing soap and plain old water there we go 
is my solution. I'll drop it in. And let's see. Can we get it to show up? The light was not a good idea. Yeah, it started to show up. This doesn't take too long, it's like a minute or two maxim. It seems you, you can overdo this, but it's not too easy. So from my experience, you should do this a little bit longer than a shorter time, just to make sure it's properly exposed. Because if you do not, then it definitely will not work. Yeah, now it's really, really starting to show up. Sorry about the potato quality though. I'm filming on my old phone, so my Samsung is in the repair. Some idiot broke the display again. <laughs> but if this video gets any traction, I will make a new better one, even maybe with some more detail. You can even see some residue leaving from the circuit. That's also kind of indicator when it's ready, when there's no more residue coming off the circuit. It's almost ready. I'll move you here next. So here's my etching solution. I have this container. This is PP plastic, so it should hold the hold the um, acid. The seal, I'm not sure, but it should be silicone, which should also hold the uh, acid pretty well. And this is Pyrex, so it will definitely hold. Now I'll take the circuit out of the developing solution and rinse it off so I don't mix the solution. And we can start, uh, start etching. And this, this is really not worth seeing. This will take probably more than 10 minutes. And you should be doing this constantly or semi-constantly. And the liquid should be around 30, 30 to 50 degrees. I guess 40 would be really good. So the acid works the best. Usually on the side of the bag you get or whatever container you get the acid in should say uh, what degrees it should be at so it works the best so I have it in the hot plate and it's set to one and I waited for it to be hot and then I have turned it off and now we will we'll just keep keep agitating it and I'll come back when it's ready so the etching is finally done and we have the final product here I tried to over expose it so you can see how it looks not sure 
Oh, there you go. You can see it's a little bit dotted, all the areas that there is still copper left. That's what happens if you overexpose it. So if you were looking uh, directly uh, at light, so the light would be behind this, you could see that there's uh, actual holes in the circuit. Although this seems to be still usable, this is not a uh, high current application, so in this case it wouldn't matter. And if you underexpose it, you wouldn't get the tracks fully etched. So that's also information I, uh, or it was hard to find, so there we go. And I have already made one earlier. This is the board that it was used to. Well, the soldering is completely horrible. Sorry for that. My soldering iron tip is kind of not good at this moment. So have to get a new one. So this is driver or driver for the seven segment display. So it's basically adapter plate for Arduino Mega. So this is a common cathode, so you drive it with uh, plus voltage. And I uh, just use a 90 degree angle here because it's kind of hard to try and solder the header on this side. And this is only one side PCB, so this was the best option to get easily attached. And let's power it and see what it does. see I have done something wrong oh yeah my minus was in the wrong place oh, there you go working PCB nothing fancy but yeah of course if you made all this with wires on a breadboard all the resistors and whatnot it would be a horrible looking thing now it's kind of neat Probably not ending to use this on anything since it's kind of useless, but maybe just to show you how it's done and it actually works. So, last tip here. Since you need to drill it, and the drills are tiny, this is 0 0.8 millimeter, and you can't fit this in any normal drill since the chuck is just not small enough to actually hold on this. So I added shrink wrap, multiple layers, started with the smallest one, and then I added layers until it fit on my Dremel tool nicely, as you can see. And it holds on this pretty nicely now, and it's pretty center, so it's a quick easy tip how to actually drill this.